Shalom, Israel. Shalom and blessings to my brothers and sisters that will tune in to my first video. And uh, blessings to all of those who are actually seeking the truth and are walking in truth. All praises to the Most High, the King of Israel. All praises to him, to our God, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, and Yeshua's name, also known as Jesus Christ, our blood and Savior. I want to say that um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual, spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Okay? The spiritual world is real. The spiritual realm is real. It's real. And... I don't, I don't look at this world the same anymore based on, um, you know, God changing my life and from the things that I have been seeing with my own eyes, this world ain't the same. It's not the same. Sin is real. And when you sin, all right, when you sin, you're opening doors to the spirit realm. You're opening doors for demons to enter into your life and enter into your spirit, your vessel. Right here. You're letting them enter you by sinning. Alright? When you sin that first time, it doesn't necessarily mean a demon's gonna jump right into you. But what you're doing, you already opened the door for entry. Alright? And the more you sin, the more you sin, the more you feeding that demon, the more you giving the energy from that little sin, it gets bigger, bigger, bigger. And from it getting bigger, it becomes a stronghold. And then from a stronghold, right, it becomes a bondage. It becomes a bondage. Now you don't know how to get out of that because now it is taking over you. All you can do is think about that sin, of any sin, but you just keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about it and you're doing it because... The devil makes sin feel good. The devil makes sin feel good. That's why there's so much sin in this damn world. And that's why nobody really wants to talk about sin. But the reality is, what you watch on TV and what you listen to, the type of music you listen to, you are opening doors to a demonic world. You're opening doors to everything you watch, what you see, everything. Even words, the words that come out your mouth, can be witchcraft as well. Out of all the sins, which is there's a lot of them, but there are seven deadly sins. Alright, there's seven. Seven deadly sins. You have lust, you have gluttony, you have greed, you have sloth, you have wrath, you have envy. And you have the number one that God hates the most. God hates the most. And that's pride. Pride being, that's the, these are the seven sins, but pride is being numero uno. Number one. You heard? It's number one. It's pride. Now, it's just, it's just, the spiritual world real. It's real. It's real. And I'm going to read that again. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 For our struggle is not against flesh and blood this is flesh it's, it's not against it's not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms you think it's a game? Spiritual world is real. There is only God and there is only Satan. There's only two masters that you can serve in this. There's only two masters you can serve. It's either you serving Satan or you serving the Most High. 
the king of Israel, Yahweh, in Yeshua's name, also known as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. There's only two masters you could serve. And this world that we live in, this world ain't God's world. This is the devil's world. This is his world. This is his world. Me as a kid, see, I was spiritually dead at one point. I was spiritually dead. I ain't know nothing about the spiritual world. And I'm a person whose family is, you know, a Christian. They go to church. They, they, you know, growing up was all church. But nobody talked about spiritual warfare. Nobody talked about spiritual warfare. You know, as a, as a kid, my, my parents came into a marriage. They did it the right way. They were both from church, found each other, got married, and created me. They did it the right way. So, um, you know, when I was a kid, I had a traumatic experience. You know, my parents, they, they broke up. They had a divorce. It was bad. You know, I still remember it to this day, how it played out. You know, which hurt my heart. It, it, how, how the thing went, the stuff that he said, how the whole argument went. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt me. It hurt my heart, and it broke my heart, and it also built anger in my heart, because then I had to see how my mother had to react when my father left, which also hurt me and built anger. So not only that, as a child. Not knowing about doors being opening, I already opened the door. Because these are feelings and things that the devil wants. So I didn't know I was opening doors. So later in life, that anger, that hurt, you know what I'm saying? It just started to build within people, within things that I was doing in my life. Also in relationships that I got into, I got my heart broke first which was also the betrayal. So I was like, whoa, <laughs> that turned from that for me to just say, I just started just saying, you know what, screw it, whatever. And just started to not take things seriously anymore because of how I got hurt. So I just decided to, you know what, everything there is not, is, there's no happiness. So I might as well just destroy everything. Meanwhile, I didn't, that's the mindset. I already had demons in me from doors opening prior to that. So I'm already, you know. So what I do, what I would, what I would do is I would uh, pretty much destroy what I, what I had. If I had a girlfriend, I would do the damage first before the damage was done to me of the fear of getting my heart broke first. That way if I got my heart broke first. Or, or that way if I if they confess that they hurt me or I caught them, I can just be at ease and say, you know what, it's all good because I did the same thing. You know, that was the mindset I had as a as a kid. It was it was that wasn't cool to have. That wasn't a cool mindset to have. But like I said, I already was opening doors without realizing it. But my number one sin that I was in bondage with was lust. Now, that was the one that took a hold of me and controlled me. The lust. You know, as a kid, when you watch movies with your parents or you watch certain things, they cover your eyes. Certain things you ain't supposed to see, they cover it. You know, and you want to know, wait, why are you covering my eyes? Why I can't see? Why I can't see what you're not letting me see? And um, I was introduced as a kid. Like, you know, no team. But I was introduced to hardcore porn from somebody. And that is what changed, you know, that, that already, that opened the door. Once I saw that, that was already a door opener. And it also did things into my body. But mind you, I was already going through heartbreaks. You know, I was already, I already had doors already opening. But that was now a new door being open. And that decided to um it did things to my body 
And then I just started to masturbate watching that until I just started to watch it more and more. Not realizing that I was feeding that demon and feeding that spirit and feeding that sin, that succubus demon. I was feeding it, feeding that Jezebel. I was feeding it, feeding it, feeding it. From, from it becoming little to bigger, for it being a stronghold, to it being a bondage. I was a slave to that. You know? And I will, I will be around people. I was that guy with the bottles, the bottles, the, the drinking, the smoking, the charmer, the guy who got the girls, who flirted, who talked with them, who made them laugh, who made people laugh. But I was really the person who was the most saddest. I wasn't happy. I was sad well, in my life. I was sad. I had depressed feelings. Fear, anxiety, stress. I was hurt, heart broke. You know, I had, I had so many doors opening for the sins that I was doing because of what I was going through in life and not knowing about spiritual warfare. That, you know, I just was just on a full rampage. I was just destroying everything. But God changed my life. And I'm going to tell you how he changed my life. Okay, so, and this is how interesting this thing is because when we are asleep in this matrix world, when we are asleep, when we are, when the demons is in us and we already open doors, you don't know nothing about what's around you spiritually because you could be hanging out with people and these people all along can be witches, warlocks, masons. Sorcerers, you know what I'm saying? They all hanging with you, but you you spiritually spiritually dead. You don't know nothing about what's going on in this world. You don't know nothing about the world because you too into your sin. The devil, when you sin, the devil covers your eyes. He covers your ears because he got you. Demons control you now, which is why I don't believe in mental illness. I don't believe in mental illness. All these people you see out here that people label them crazy. All these people that you see them, they talking to themselves, right? They talking to themselves or they doing crazy things. That's not them. And I, my heart goes out to them. I pray for them because those, they're demonly possessed. They got demons in them and they need to be delivered. And the only way you get delivered is when you go to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And you repent for all your sins. Every single sin, you repent for all your sins. It don't even matter what it was or what it is. When you repent, you get saved. You get saved. All right? And I'm going to say it again. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's out here. He ain't wasting time. He knows his time is short. And he, that's why he ain't wasting time. He's pushing so many things right now. He's pushing so many things right now. But I also feel like my relationships didn't work out well because I was a slave to my lust. Listen, all my all my, my world and my, my life consisted of working, drinking, smoking, the hookah. I got into the weed because of my last ex. I ain't have nobody after her. But I got it. It was smoking, the hookah. And partying and just having sex. Sinning like crazy sex. Feeding that deep feeding the feeding those demons. Sex with my ex. Sex with mess arounds with women. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't happy with that, but I was feeding that. Now um 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 For we live by faith not by sight You gotta have faith with the almighty With the most high And believe in him because he's real And he will work in your heart It's, it's, a, it's, such, a, it's such a great feeling when you have him in your, in your life And when you accept him When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior And when you accept him It's such a great and peaceful feeling But I'm gonna get to how he changed my life I'm going to get to that. So, when COVID hit, right, 
when COVID hit, because we know the industry is evil. That's the devil's playground. That's his stuff. The industry is evil and the media, I don't believe nothing the media says ever since me coming into this truth and this light. I don't believe none of that. So the, so the, um, so the media industry is all evil. They do sacrifices. They do everything for Lucifer. We know that. They do all these rituals. This world is wicked. It's evil. There's a lot of things you don't know. Especially those who are still asleep in this matrix because they are demonly possessed and they are in their sin. But God can get you out of that sin. You just got to repent and believe in him and run to him and pray and get free from those sins. Deliver, get deliverance and get those demons out of you because it can happen. Now, when COVID hit, the media, social media, they were showing a lot of things, right? They were putting panic. People were just dropping on the floor, dying. Nobody knew what was going on. There was something you couldn't see. Which, in my opinion, COVID is a lot. That's a COVID demon. It's a fake. The devil likes to plant seeds. He likes to put fear. That's his job. He got a job to do. So what happens is, my grandma got sick. Things started happening around me. I started getting all fear and I started getting worried about what, what was going on. What's going on? I started seeking God. Started coming across videos of people worshiping God. Now I started coming across gospel pages out of the blue and at one point I felt like that was my calling that God was trying to talk to me like he was he did, that was my time for him because everybody got a purpose everybody has uh, uh, God knows when it's your time when he has a time to call from you right so what happened my ex got sick and things were going bad you know then the back you know the the, the, the thing that they wanted you to do and all that also with, the, with, with work I kept crying and pleading to him and going with him so it came to a point where things got back things got back to normal right things got back to normal grandma wasn't sick no more my ex wasn't sick everything got back to normal, normal. and all that pleading I was doing looking for God it just went out the window. I went right back to my normal way of life. Smoking again, drinking again, partying, sex again. I, was, I went right back to sinning. I had one foot in, one foot out. You know? And God don't like that. God don't like when you play with him. He don't like that. He don't like when you have one foot in and one foot out. It's either you all in or you all out. You won't, like I said, you only you can't serve two masters. You can't worship him. And you can't do things of this world. And you can't be sinning while you're trying to praise him and worship him and trying to follow his laws and statutes and command, but you also doing things for Satan. So what happened? <laughs> God he, he works mysteriously. He does things. He can put you in the most craziest situation in the storm so you can have a real eye opener because it, haven't you noticed that when people are in the storm or they are going through something terrible in their life who is it that they reach for and look for and run to the most high they praise him they pray to him they run to him for him to be their savior right only when the things are going bad in their life Right? Why is it that you can't keep continuing to serve him when things are going well in your life? Why is it you got to wait for that storm to hit your life? Why? But everybody runs to him when the things aren't going well in their life. Well, that's what happened to me with COVID. And when things got better, I went right back to my wicked ways and I was playing games. And like I said, God don't like that. So what did he do? He threw me in a storm. But now that storm was also my awakening. Because we all got a purpose here on this earth. What it is, I, I don't know what our purpose is, but we got to just keep praying to God for him to, to reveal it to us and just keep, keep having him in your heart and keep having a relationship with him, with the Most High. 
have a relationship with him. You know, don't just only wait for Sunday, Sunday services to just go to church and pray for him. And then back to Monday through, front, through, through Saturday, you going back to your regular world, your regular life, doing all that, what you do. And then you only praise him on Sunday when you want to be a good person. Nah, you, have a, you have to have a relationship with him every day, every single day, from when you wake up to when you go to sleep. Because there's a spiritual warfare here, and the devil is trying to collect souls, and he's trying to attack those who are walking in the truth. So back to my story. What happens at my job? My mother has a, a friend that's a cop, and he gave us a card. And there's people in my job, you know, some are Masons, Freemasons. Some of them, some of them live a life of gang banging. They, they, they have, a, you know, they, they live that life. Some of them are probably out of it. But the thing is, I don't get in, in their business. I know these things, but I don't get in the business. And it's not like I'm going to do anything... What you do with your life, all I all I do is pray for people and pray that they seek the most high. But what you do with your life, that's none of my business. All I'm here to do is just say, seek the most high. But this is when God started working with me because after I had that conversation with a shareholder of mine, you know, about the world and certain things, you know, and I was like, you know, I don't got nothing to worry about because I got to, you know, my... If I was to ever get in trouble, like, I got nothing to worry about. I got a, a car, so I showed him the car. And one of the sharehold, shareholders walked to with a co-worker of mine. And from there, you know, this is where the devil plants the seeds of fear and all this stuff. This is how fear kicks in and then into the mind. Because he likes to attack your mind. So they walk off. Now in my mind, I'm like, what happened over here? Did he, you know, he must have said something about that. So people started acting weird towards me and the only way I knew that that word got around was you know some people would say certain words or if they would ask me about somebody or is that person a cop like they would say little words here and there just to give it away so I was getting worried I was like yo because that's what the devil wants but mind you I already had sins I had demons in me you know what I'm saying I had demons in me so that's what they do they roll up the devil's job is to seek he's seeking to steal kill and destroy you you don't want nothing perfect in your life because he wants to ruin your life. So I'm going through things in my job. I'm, I'm going through spiritual warfare without knowing I'm going through spiritual warfare. So I'm getting people watching me now. They watching me. Now, mind you, this is the beginning of what is called the gang stalk that's happening around the world with people. I didn't know nothing about no gang stalking. Like I said, I ain't know nothing about gang stalking. I ain't know nothing about spiritual warfare. But all I know is that every every day from from my work, from from my work schedule, it was always a battle. Going from work to home, a battle. I was battling spirits in my job, and also having the fear of everybody knowing, okay, he's with a cop, should we be worried because these people will do things in their life it's to the point that I'm being followed by people, seeing cars and, and they watching me, but I didn't know that these were demons in their spirits, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just, I'm praying to God, I'm praying to God, I'm running to God, I'm, I'm running home, I'm crying to him, I'm like, thank you for getting me home, but I'm going through a spiritual warfare, I'm battling. It came to a point that I started seeing demons in the people's faces. Demons. I started seeing demons in their faces. Alright? What they say, the eyes are the windows to the soul. By me seeking the most high and praying to him, he he put me in that storm. He threw me in that storm. Because I remember. He threw he put me in there. God works mysteriously to change your life around. And some people it could be crucial. They could be in a hospital bed. Like, something crazy can happen in your life for you to change for him to change your ways to open up your eyes and seek him so mine was he threw me into that storm now I'm getting hit I'm praying I'm praying I'm seeing demons I'm getting hit with witchcraft in my job from my co-workers and from shareholder the residents they doing rituals but this is a spiritual warfare this is all spiritual right 
Now I can see the demons. I can see. This, I can see. I, my eyes are open. Remember when you sin, and when you have the devil around you and demons, he covers your eyes. He covers your ears. You, he don't want you to get to know the truth. People call it the third eye, the penal gland. Nah, God calls it the seal of God. But I had that open, and I was able to see. But I still didn't know what was going on in the spiritual world. But mind you, I told my mother about the situation, her cop friend and all that. Because I didn't know what was going on. But I knew it was something going on because I was starting to see demons. So, now that I'm getting clean and I'm seeking him and he's showing me the spirit world and the truth about what's going on. I come home. And, you know, my grandma was going through her own moments in her life with certain people. And she was, she was, she was going through moments. So she ended up opening doors without realizing that she opened her own doors. You know, she was worried about family, situations, depression, you know. So these are doors opening for these spirits. I was able to see that that wasn't my grandmother when I got home. Why? Because when when you clean yourself out, when God, when you start repenting to God, when you ain't sinning no more, when you just seeking Him, the Holy Spirit now starts coming into you because you ain't feeding your flesh for sin. Now you walking in that spirit. You feeding your spirit with good things, and now you seeking Him. So the Holy Spirit, it gives you discernment to 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 see the evil, who, who, who has a good spirit in them, who has a bad spirit in them. You get that spirit of discernment. So there was just things that me and my grandma, you know, I would talk to her, I would look at her, and just things weren't right. Because I knew she was a woman of God, but just at that moment, it just wasn't right. That wasn't her from what I could see through the, through the eyes of how she was acting. She would smile at me and look at me, and she would flick channels. And those channels were showing death, it was showing things on TV that I've never seen in my life, but it was things that I know she would never ever watch. So that's how I knew I was like, okay, this is spiritual warfare, even in my own home. And knowing that the things you watch, you open the doors as well into your own home. That the Christian station, this Christian radio station she would listen to, it would change. The message, the codes, they were speaking differently. They, was, they weren't saying what they were saying no more. Everything was changing. So it came to a point that I would, I would go right back to work because now I was like, yo, what is going on? I didn't know what was going on. So now I'm going to work and I'm going through the battle. I started seeing grasshoppers climbing on walls, going slow, spiders, demons, people doing rituals, people doing ceremonies because I would hear them screaming out there to the point that I had this female resident looked at me and her face was like a demon, but she's like, oh, you good because I'm battling. I'm battling. I ain't giving them a choice or an option, and I'm battling. Then it came to this this guy. He approached me, right, with a delivery. He came into my lobby. The most eeriest guy I've ever seen. i never seen him. He just looked eerie. It was like something about him was off. And he asked me, he had a delivery for my building. Now, it wasn't from my building, but he had a delivery for a building across the street, Right? So I told him, oh, it's not in this building. It's the building across the street. The way my lobby is set up, you can see from your right and from your left. You can see when they leave. You can see them walk from the left. You can see them walk down on the right hand. My man left the lobby from the left and the right. I, I didn't see him walk that. So I'm thinking to myself, maybe he's like in the little corner in front of my... In front of the door, probably on the phone or something, like, he ain't moved yet. When I went out the lobby to check, my man was gone, poof, disappeared, vanish. And for those of you who don't believe this, but astral projection is very, very real. It's demonic, but it's very real. People are astral projecting. People are doing out-of-body experiences. It's all demonic. It's real. This is all real. It's all demonic. All this new age stuff is real. Crystals and all that, that's demonic. That's all demonic. So now, 
it came to a point that I got pissed off. I got mad because I'm like, yo, I just got fed up and tired. I started praying to God. I'm like, yo, I'm tired of these demons. Now I'm feeling the energy of the Holy Spirit, the ghost, to the point that I saw the fear in my grandmother's eye, but that wasn't her. That was the demon that was in her. Her eyes got big. So she's on the phone calling my mother, calling people, and they hearing me scream because you know what the devil does? Distract you from trying to get to your purpose. They do everything in their power to distract you. But the thing that hurts the most is that it's these religious, it's religious people, right? They see me going through a battle, but nobody understood anything. Nobody understood why I'm going through what I'm going through. Nobody could have sat down with me and talked to me like, yo, you're going through this right now because you are being spiritually awoken. This, 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 such and such and such is happening. Nah, nobody explained that to me. I had to go through all that by myself to the point that I had a battle with my grandmother. And I, re I was trying to rebuke it. I literally grabbed her by her forehead in her room and was rebuking it. And it was a battle. It took a minute. But I was not successful with it. Because I didn't really know how to battle the demons. But God was letting me see all of this. So I didn't get to finish it. And my grandmother ended up telling family about what happened. Even though it was spiritual to rebuke. And I ended up getting a court. Like, I ended up getting, you know, a case on me. And my mother ended up coming to the house. You know, and I could see that, you know, their spirits weren't right. The discernment was showing me, you know, that they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them, that they had the other spirits in them. The discernment showed me that. And it hurts to see that. But it's, that's what happens when you live in this sin. You know, you're entering demons in your own life. I ended up getting put into a hospital because I had an episode, they call it. I was not myself. I was not myself when I was actually going through a spiritual awakening when God was revealing to me about the evil in this world and letting me see the demons for what it is. Right? So even though I was in this in this clinic for I don't know how long it was, but I was in there for a, a minute. I think it was like two weeks. Two weeks, maybe three weeks in there. God put me in there to clean me. To release the evil spirits from me to keep me calm keep me at peace even though i was still battling demons in there from the people in there but he let me get free from the spirit of lust no porn no masturbation no sexual thought nothing he put me clean he put me clean from everything that my spirit started feeling different and better and i was just like still rebuking in there because the demons were still working through people in there I, they, 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 they did blood work in me. It came to a point that a nurse came in, came to my room. And it's interesting because that same nurse who came into my room was the same nurse I saw before I even got put into that hospital, before even the scenario even occurred for the police to put me in cuffs and to take me out over there. That same doctor, I saw him at my job sitting on on this on this porch on the phone regular. I ain't never know. I never seen him. I don't know who he was. But I saw him before all this happened, and he ended up being the nurse into the in the clinic I was in. So he saw the Bible sitting on my bed, and he was like, what you reading while he's drawing my blood? But I guess his spirit got rattled from seeing that, and he breathed hard on my Bible. But it was a certain breath. It, wasn't, it didn't even sound human. It just didn't sound right. But I knew that that man was demonly possessed. He, he took the blood. He was doing it quick, quick, quick. And what happened is, the little, um, that wristband that they put when they take the shot, all of a sudden when he left, it magically appeared underneath my, my blanket. My, not my blanket. My, yeah, my, underneath my sheet. So I'm knocking on the door, because usually there's a certain time when your door can open and close, and they lock it when you go to bed. So I'm trying to open, open it, but at this time, it's locked. That's how the spirit world works. It, it is locked. It's locked. I couldn't open it. You know, then my mom, she she came to visit me. And even when my mother came to visit me, they were still harassing me. I was surrounded. I saw the demons. I was hearing certain voices. It was, all, it was crazy. But I had to open the door and then I told them about, you know, the, the thing that was underneath my sheet. So that way, because the devil and the spirits, what they like to do is they want to plant seeds. They want to make it seem like, okay... 
You're trying to commit suicide or they're trying to make you look crazy. So I remember one time that my mother came to visit, they would do things to my room. These, these people being controlled by the evil, the spirits in them, that had the back of my bed sheet, it was tied like a knot. And that the way it was formed was, if I go to sleep, somebody could sneak into my room and put it over my neck and just strangle me until, you know what I'm saying? So that way it could look, it could look like I committed suicide. When in reality, the demon and the devil's job is to try to kill me. You see, because the interesting thing that I learned is that God knows you. He knows all of us, all right? God knows you from the moment you were born and God knows exactly what is your purpose on this world. He knows exactly what he has planned for you. And the crazy thing is, is that the devil knows exactly what God has made you to be on this earth as well. He knows who you're supposed to be. He knows that too. And his job is to make you be in sin, to blind your eyes, cover your ears, and not let you reach your purpose, and not let you reach your goal for the truth, to be heard. So you don't know the truth. But God knows exactly who you are, and he has a purpose for you. Just like he got a purpose for me. And he changed my life around. So he actually opened my eyes. Even when I was in the hospital, I was getting cleansed, clean. You know, I was still telling the doctors. You know, I was I was staying hard with God. I would tell them, yeah, God is real. This, the, 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 the devil is real. There's demons, you know. And the doctors were demonly possessed. Because the spirit of discernment was in me. And I could see it on them too, you know. It came to the point where they, they tried to question me about the Bible. But then when I mentioned... The saints in this Alex Crowley and all the demonic stuff. Oh, they knew that too. Oh, but they knew it very well. They had little smiles on their face. I was like, man, there's a... So you know what I'm talking about? You know I'm not crazy. But some of these people don't... Some of these people don't know about the spiritual world. And then there's some people who are actually saints in this. There's cults. The, the rabbit hole gets deep in this world, man. That's what I'm trying to tell you. This world is not what it is. Because ever since I started coming into this truth, I have now become a victim of gang stalking. And that's what the devil does. He has people follow you. He has people watch you now. Now, in my walk, in my walk, I'm coming across people. I'm coming across witches. I'm coming across warlocks. I'm coming across sorcerers. I'm coming across wizards. I'm coming across... I guess the same thing in Spanish Santeros, Santeras, Brujos and Brujas And they don't scare me The devil don't scare me Those it, demons don't scare me Why? Because the Most High got me Just like he got you too walking in the truth He got you No weapon shall form and prosper against us Amen None of that Because when you're walking with, with God And when you put your trust in him He's going to make sure that you are alright Do not touch my anointed ones Mm-mm he ain't going to let that happen. He ain't going to let that happen to you. Now, those who are living in sin and those who are saintiness, I don't know about their fate. I just hope they repent. But there's some people out there who just, they serve evil. They do evil. And um, gang stalking is very real. And it took me to uh, to understand exactly what, what gang stalking is. Now, I've been getting gang stalked. And um, gang, stalk, gang stalking is is organized mobbing, right? Gang stalking is organized mobbing. Is when a collective group of people come together to isolate, to persecute, and cause issues, and cause issues in one person's life. They do this as a form of manipulation, as an intimidation tactic. They have case studies on American citizens, and these studies go into a database. They are coming for those who follow God, stand on their beliefs, and those who can think for themselves. Those who don't let Republicans or Democrats rule their opinion, those who could think outside of the box, and those who don't go along with the status quo. You don't follow people, you don't do you 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 your own person. You got no problem. Like you you could be by yourself. And you stand you following with the most high. This harassment comes from government agencies, people in the community. This can even come from friends and family, even co-workers. 
You have workplace mobbing, which I'm experiencing as well, ever since I started coming into this truth. Mobbing on the internet. You have mobbing that is taking place all over the world. There are CIA records of this. You have an organization, COINTELPRO, which stalk the people and watch the people. All of this is real, but it's more spiritual, especially for those that are awake and walking in this truth. And there are 10 ways that the government watches you. And maybe for another video, I might talk about those uh, those videos, like those 10 ways that the government watches you, but there's 10 ways that they watch you. But yeah, ever since I'm walking in this truth, this, and those who are being gang stalked, the spirit of discernment, unless you know you're being gang stalked because it shows you the fakeness in the people. You can see what they do. So this is what they do, all right? Check this out. They'll cough, right? They all, all of a sudden, they all start coughing. <coughs> These are signs. They'll cough. They'll do things with their nose, like if they got a cold when they're around you. But these are the demons that send them. <laughs> they constantly do that when they're around you. Pay attention to these signs. They will rub their head or they'll pat their head, right? Another thing is they'll, they'll wipe their mouth or their face. Like These are signs that they do. They're always driving around in the in the red car and in the blue car and 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 white cars. The white cars is to 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 try to just get you the trick to see. Okay, that car's following me, following me. It's all it's a mind game, but they they doing this thing right. And um, they wear red and they wear blue. They wear red and they wear blue. And they even use their kids, their little kids, because it's spiritual warfare. It's all demons. They will push their kids along the walkway so their kids could be up ahead. So if you're walking and their kid is walking, some people, they're watching you. They even take pictures. They have a fake conversation on their phone. They ain't talking to nobody. They have a fake conversation on their phone, but they have it at a certain way where the phone is recording you, right? They're recording you. Your every move, whatever street you at, so they can report it to Satan, report it to their handler. Right? These agents, these agents of Satan, they're watching you. Right? And every person that comes your way, you can see it because they look at you, but then they look at the handler. They look at that person who's sending them to do whatever it is that they gotta do. Especially the females, they walk by you and they got the phone like this, or people have their phone like this. They're recording you. Then they have people that come your way to try to talk to you. Which is, you know, like the community, friends, family, whatever it is. But it's spiritual warfare. Keep this in mind that these people who are living in sin are controlled by demons. You are walking in truth. You got the light in you. But they, they, will, they will question you. They will try to have a conversation with you to get information out of you. So that way they can bring it back to whoever sent them to talk to you. That's what they do. Alright? And the only way you know is sometimes they ask you how you doing. You know what you do? You respond back with how you doing. Be polite. Always be polite. Don't be mean. Be polite. How you doing? If they don't answer that, because sometimes they don't, they keep walking. Usually when they, ask, when they ask me that, I always say, I'm blessed, thank God. I always say that. But um, when, you, when, when you are walking in the truth, and when, you are, when, when you're not following nothing of this world, right? Because... Me being in that hospital, I saw the angel, and I saw the angel through the window outside. He was flying, beautiful big wings, and he hit behind a cloud. Like he did some walk. I started seeing things. I started getting spiritually awakening. Like I started becoming more spiritual. Now I look at the world different. It's not the same, man. There's people literally, like when I walk, there could be nobody on the block, right? Nobody. I look down, I look up, all of a sudden there's mad people there. They came out of nowhere. Or sometimes people just pop out of nowhere. Or they will have people coming out of a car at the same time, but it's a female. And, you know, I didn't know what semen ret retention is. I didn't know what that was. And semen retention is a real thing. It's spiritual. It's a real thing. And, and that's when you abstain from... You know, from, from your sexual desires. That's when you abstain from releasing your seed, your life force. You know what I'm saying? When, when, see, I'm happy.
that I'm on semen retention. And I'm on, it's three months and 98 days total now that I've been on no fat and monk mode. No fat and monk mode means I am not masturbating. I'm not releasing my life force, my seeds. And I'm not watching no porn. And I am not having no sex, sexual immorality. I'm not having sex with no woman. It's been three months since I've been away from any of that. And I could tell you one thing. My mind has been clear. I've been, I feel so free. I've been able to, to do some research on the world, on these pagan holidays. And this is why people look at me weird now because I'm talking about pagan holidays now. We just finished having Thanksgiving, which is a pagan holiday, which everybody who don't know about the dog truth, I suggest you look it up about <laughs> How the Indians got slaughtered. There's, there's, there's a lot that we we're about to hit December. There's Christmas, another pagan holiday, goes against with the witches and warlocks. Witches and warlocks got their holidays too. That also follows up with the Yule tradition, the winter um solstice. If I'm saying it wrong, excuse me, but there's a few winter solstice. You know, celebrations. There's a lot of pagan holidays. There's a lot of things. You know, I could talk about history now. You know, now I could have a full-blown conversation with somebody. Back then, I couldn't talk to you about nothing. I, all I could talk to you, all I could talk to somebody was about drugs, drinking, music, which is low vibrational music, video games, movies, and just sexual things. Now I can have a full-blown conversation with somebody about the scriptures, about the word, about the about history, about a lot of things that it feels good when you start looking up. Now you can see people, when I look at the people's eyes, they can't look at me. They can't. But then, you know what I'm saying, being on semen retention, which is spiritual, but it's also true, you attract a lot of women now. Why? Because what, what I didn't know was when you're wasting your life force, when you masturbate and watching the websites or, or wasting it on your, your partner, your girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever it is. When you wasting that, your your testosterone level goes down. And women are more spiritual. They sense that. They sense who's a simp, who's all about the sex and all that, which is why men is getting used out here. Because the modern women, they all they got spirits in them. They got that Jezebel spirit in them, and it's all evil, right? But when you, when you got that semen, when you want semen retention, and when you're doing things for the Most High, and when you following His law, statutes, and commandments, and when you trying to do the right thing, right? When you ain't releasing your life force, bro, your testosterone level goes like this. It goes very high. Not only does it go very high, you are now spiritually awakening. Your, 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 your spiritual vibration is high, right? Everything about you is, is, is high. There's a light in you. There's a light in you. Why? Because even in, in John chapter 8, verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You got a light in you that these that these people are fascinated about. That they look at you. They don't even know why they're looking at you. Men too. They're looking at you. They don't even know why. But the demon and the spirit that's in them, they recognize that light. But the people with the carnal mind who's still asleep from the... They ain't in a plug from the Matrix. Those who are still asleep, they're looking at you like, wait, what? What's going on with this? Who is this person? You know what I'm saying? What's, there's something different about this brother or, the, or or this sister. You know? Even in John... Chapter 9, verse 5. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So when you have Christ in you, and when you're following him with the Holy Spirit in you, you get that light. And the darkness sees that. You are shining a bright light in this dark world. Now what the devil does, the, the devil knows what you like as well. Just like what God knows, the devil knows too. So what he does, he wants to get you out that light. He wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you, of course. He wants your soul. But once he knows that you started coming into this light, 
in the spiritual realm, <laughs> in the spiritual realm, there's a big wanted poster for you. Just like there is for me. There's a big wanted poster in the spiritual realm. And all the evil and the demons, they are pissed off now that you found the light, they found the truth, and you know that Jesus is the way. Right? Yeshua. And that Yahweh is the king of Israel. Now you're learning your truth. You're learning who you're becoming, who you, who, who you are. You're following the Bible. You're following the truth. Because there's only one truth. Now that you're following that, following the scriptures... What the devil is going to do? He's going to throw people your way. It could be friends. It could be family. It could be anybody. Even old exes or people who... You throw them your way to just bring you right back down to center so you could get right back on... So you could... Don't even worry about the truth or, or, or going to your purpose. Whatever your purpose is, he's trying to stop that. Now, on my semen retention journey, I've been seeing a lot of things. Right? A lot of... the. I don't even think about sex no more. The modern women, I don't even look at that. All these women, how they dressing out, revealing themselves with the big bodies and curvy. Listen, a woman, they're beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Who doesn't love a woman? They're beautiful. And some of them are naturally shaped curvy. Without doing the BBLs and all that, they naturally shaped curvy. And they don't have to do all that they do to reveal all these curves, right? They don't have to. But like I said, the modern woman, that's the spirit of Jezebel, the succubus demon. And they're getting these men. They're getting these men. they bringing them. they slaving them because they are slaves to their lust. They can't escape it. So they're drooling over every woman that they see. Now, I see a woman. At one point, I was drooling the same way. I was like, oh, I got to have her. Oh, I need that in my life. Oh, she's bad. She's good. I would drool. And I would, I would just come to them and just flirt and talk. These women know what they're doing. So now, that I'm spiritually awakening. I'm awoken. I know what's up with this world. I, I see the demons in these people. I see the tactics that they do, the, the gang stalking tactics. I see what they do. I see how they move. I know how the spirit works. I know exactly how it works. I know exactly how it works now. You can see, you can see right through a person. And sometimes when you walk by, you you can see how a person really acts when they talk among other people. You see, like they, they move a certain way. It's not even right. It don't even it don't even sit well with that person. But like I said, it's a spiritual warfare, and they all are, they all a slave to their sin. And the only way you gotta get free from that is you gotta repent from your sins. And the churches ain't even talking about that. Why? Because the witches it's comfortable in the church. And I went to a church and I seen it for myself. The Jezebels are in the church. I seen the demons in people, even in the pastor. I seen it. They're fooling people, and I be careful with who you let chip, who, who who you let lay hands on you, because there's witchcraft and everything. They might be praying to you, and they might be talking about God, because they say God too. But you gotta test the spirits and say which God are you serving. <laughs> is it Jesus Christ, or is it the devil? Because they call him Lord too. They call him God. In Spanish, they say Señor, just like people say Señor, or, or Dios. They call him that too. So you got to test the spirits to see who's who. And sometimes they laying a hand on you and you thinking you getting a prayer. But nah, they putting witchcraft and they putting a demon in you. Or they suppressing whatever's in you to keep it calm. Why you think you got all these suicide rates going up high? Hmm? The, the reason why for the suicide rate is there's a lot of people who is being gang stalked in this world. Based who's coming off of this truth, they're being gang stalked. And a lot of people can't handle the pressure. It's, 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 it's a lonely road It's a lonely walk But when you open up your eyes to this world Because the rabbit hole gets deep There's a lot of things in this world That they that they doing About MK Ultra. Oh, don't let me get started with MK Ultra. Don't let me get started with a lot of things That they doing in this world <laughs> I've seen a guy Astra project On one of these On one of the bridges down on like 70 something street on York Avenue Right There was a bridge and usually people just start popping out of nowhere. Because fallen angels take forms of human forms too. Like they could take a, a, a form of a person. Not all these people are human. Not all these people are human. You can see right through them that some of them are not, not even human. Don't even get me started on draconians. The reptilians. Don't even let me get, don't even let me get started on that. Because you can see right through a person. I had these two Jewish couples. They came to me and usually I always open the elevator for them. Right? 
Because for the Sabbath, they can't touch electricity, electronic, whatever. They can't do that. So I pressed the seventh floor for them. The light. It, it lit up. I got out the elevator. Oh, the light is not on. They turned it off with their eyes, of course. Because when I looked at them, their eyes were bright yellow. And they were staring at the number seven. They act like I don't see that. But that's the Holy Spirit discernment is giving you to see what they think you don't see. But I saw that. They were playing with me. They were, Don't let nobody steal your energy because that's what they want to do. Demons feed off your energy. That's how they live. That's how they survive. By feeding, by, by stressing you out. See, they feel good when they make you stress. And they get mad when they see you happy. They got that jealousy in them. Because they can't be like you. Because you you free. You can be yourself. They can't. They got to answer to Satan. They got to do what they got to do. They are told what to do. And they're miserable. But when they look at you, they following you because they see that light. They're like, they're something about them. But that semen retention is real, man. And I do it for the most high. But along my walk, I've been having a lot of women come my way. They'll curl their hairs. They all want to get close to me. They don't talk to me. They watch me, but they looking at me. Even the baddest ones. But I look at, I don't, I don't pay no mind to them. I just look the other way or, you know what I'm saying? But there was this one girl who came in the, um, in the train, right? Thick. Now, mind you, I'm looking at her, but I'm not looking at her, if that makes sense. I'm looking at, I'm looking, I'm looking at her, but I'm not looking at her. Right? So she comes in. What she does? She knows she's thick, but I can see the demon right in her. She turns around to show me all of that in the back. That's how the spiritual warfare works, because the devil wants you to sin. They try to get you to sin. They get points for sinning. They win when you commit suicide. When you give your life up, when you when you when you kill yourself, when you commit suicide. They, they win. But the more you endure all this pain and all that in the end, there's a reward for you for enduring and staying with the most high. So you got to stick with the truth, stick in prayer, keep praying and stay stay isolated, bro. But she was, she was, she turned around, right? She started moving her body. So I'm on you, I'm, I'm not looking at her. I'm, I'm looking at her, but I'm not looking at her. I'm just looking through the, through the glass. But I could see her, but I'm looking through the glass. I ain't looking at her whole body, nothing. So what she does, when the tunnel, when we go into the tunnel, I'm looking at myself. But I can see her. What she does, she slowly looks. She starts tilting her body. Her eyes is all on me. Because women, they sense, women knows they sense testosterone. They sense when the spirit, they more spiritual than men. And they can sense when there's a high vibration. What happens, she's moving this way. And her eyes is looking at me. Her eyes are Black, like pure black. Like when you see a horror movie, black. I was like, oh, she got a spirit on her, man. That's a demon. That's a demon. And I got the guys. Some of these guys, they look at you too. You know what I'm saying? They want to know what's so fascinating about you. Sometimes they get jealous too because you can have a guy with the most name brandish thing, which for me now, I don't care about the clothes name brands. I don't care about none of that. But you can have a guy who has the most flies gear. And they're looking at you because they're trying to find out why these women is looking at you. Or sometimes they be trying to set you up too. They be having honey traps. So fellas, don't be falling for the honey traps. Because when you get that discernment, you can see the women. They be, they be having their handler. Their handler walks by. Because they all look at their handler. Even if the handler's across the street or the handler's over there. Before they talk to you, before they're going to do what they're going to do, they look at their handler. Because they are told what to do to try to get you to sin. Because they get rewards. Some get food, they drugs, they get their, they get section eight. They do things. They doing witchcraft on you. They doing prayers. I honestly believe when I was asleep and in this matrix, when I was asleep, my life consisted and was evolved around witches and warlocks without even realizing it. I had a feeling, I got a feeling that my ex was probably that too because there was a, thing I found on my book bag and it was this wood it was like it was straight up witchcraft it was a little glass and it was gooey it was like some pinkish goo so this lady we were already not together so this lady that I was speaking to 
that was, I was I, I was gonna mess with her, so, but we were talking. She's a witch. She's a witch, and I told her about what I found. And she told me, she said, "Oh, that's um, that's a sex magic." And the reason, and she said, "Ill." And I was like, "What you mean, ill?" Because I told her that the color was pink. And that she said the reason why that color turned pink is because that's been in there for so long. That's why it turned pink. That spell, God knows how long that spell was in there for, but that's the reason why it turned pink because it was in there for so long. So I told her what that was, and she told me it's a sex magic spell, and it's sperm, male sperm mixed with period blood. Period blood with sperm. It's a spell. So that way you could be, you know, only attached to the woman. Fellas, you got to pay attention to these women that you be with, man, because best believe they got a shrine with your picture on it. They doing prayers, doing witchcraft on you, doing Satan's deeds to keep you in your lust. To keep draining your energy. So the interesting thing is, when when I got my grandmother to pray for me, to break that curse, because I told her, oh, I, somebody did witchcraft. I ain't say who, but I felt I said, oh, there was a work done on me, just like there was mad work being done on me at work too. But I was like, there was there was a work done on me. She prayed. Next thing you know, when I hit up my ex. She got into a car accident after that was broken. Mind you, I've been with her for like four years. Four years. And she all of a sudden got into a car accident in an Uber. And throughout the years that we were together, she was perfectly fine and Uber is going back and forth. And the second that breaks, you get into a car accident. So that made me to believe that there was that I was dealing with somebody who was spiritual. I was spiritually dead. I ain't know nothing about that. I ain't know nothing about life. I ain't know nothing about the, the way how this world is. But she was very spiritual because she talked about the universe this and universe that. I wasn't speaking like that. I was still a slave to my lust. I was still sinning. I had demons in me before God even worked in my life. You know? So I felt like I was dealing with witches and maybe that... She had a handler too, because at one point she did disappear, and I had to bring her back. And there were certain times where I, I should have just left it alone, because I there was things I wasn't perfect. I'm not perfect. I admit to my mistakes. A man admits to his mistakes, but there was things done too on her behalf as well that I had the upper hand to say to call it quits on my own. But like I said, I was a slave to my lust, like a lot of people are, and you bring it back. Because you were slave to your lust. You ain't free from that. Once you are free from your sin, especially lust, and you ain't thinking about sex no more, and you ain't thinking about women, and you just focusing on your goals, and you focusing on what you got to do, and keep reading the scriptures, and keep reading the book, the word, and then you, you start looking into the real history of this world, the, the dark world, the, the, the stuff you've been lied to, yo, you don't look at nothing the same anymore. Everything is different. Everything is different. Everything is different. This world is spiritual. I don't even look at nothing the same no more. There's a lot of cults in this world. And on my walk, I'm being gang stalked, workplace mobbed. It's very interesting that this year, Halloween, right? Sao Win, that just passed. It's very interesting that I've been in my job for such a long time that this year, they decided to do Halloween decorations in my lobby. <laughs> what a coincidence, right? Me now seeking God speaking you know what i'm saying following his his laws and statutes and commandments knowing about the pagan holiday still learning that learning what not to eat and what to eat because i didn't know that you can't eat pork shrimp lobsters i love that i was eating that all the time but you can't eat that it's in the book you can't eat that but you see now that i'm talking this way now that i'm acting a certain way everybody's looking at me different everybody's looking at me like i'm weird like i'm strange all right Cause I ain't following the patterns in this world. I'm not. Just like 1 John 2, chapter verse, verse 15 through 17, right? It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world comes 
the excuse me the world and its desires pass away but whoever does the will of God lives forever amen don't love nothing of this world and don't follow the patterns of this world right and and rejoice when you are being attacked and gangsta. Rejoice. Because I be having, I be seeing that. The military choppers. I be seeing the drones. The honey traps. I be having these girls coming up to me. Beautiful, beautiful girls. But I don't even pay no mind to it no more. See, now I can have a full-blown conversation with people. Look them dead in the eyes. I have a conversation about life. See, because now I'm learning about myself too. I love nature. I love taking walks by the water. I love, I love the scenery of peace. You know what I'm saying? I like all that relaxing. Everything positive. My vibration is high. People feel that. I listen to positive music. I don't listen to that drill. I don't listen to sexual R&B because the R&B now ain't nothing but explicit sex sex things. It's heartbreaks or, you know what I'm saying? It's all sex. Look at the bus stops now. Look at what the world is doing. Posters. It's all being exposed and explicit to lust, to sex things. And those who have kids, be careful because the devil's trying to take your child too. That's where they, you see them, they're looking at these posters. They, you know, they're opening doors without even realizing. So you got to protect your kids too, man. Protect them. From, spiritual world is real. Don't open no doors. Repent. Always ask God to forgive. Forgive for all your sins. And the thing, the beautiful thing is, is that God can save you. That's why he gives you all this time now. But we still, we in the last days. Eh? The Messiah is coming. He's coming. You ain't see that video not that long ago about those goat, the, you know, not the goat, the sheep, the sheep circling. Mm -hmm. And China Huh And there's a few verses about that About the sheep Scriptures is real man Especially in Revelation Look at the Euphrates River The Euphrates River Did you see that It was once full Now it's going down And it was talked about that in the Bible as well Come on man Come on and this is my first video, but I'm going to make some more videos and I'm going to pull out scriptures as well. But come on. This, this word is crazy. It's not the same. I don't look at it the same. And the devil, he he's throwing old people in my life. Old people who is not walking in the truth, who's still asleep. He's throwing them in my life and trying to throw them in my life to get me to sin or try to get me in a situation to destroy me. See, those people, you know what I'm saying? The carnal Christians, the people that go to church and are the ones who say that they are living in peace, the ones that are in church that's not telling their church about sin and being straight up with the church and saying, you got to repent for all your sin because sin is the reason it's going to lead you to hell. They ain't telling their churches that. They ain't being strictly, with, they ain't being strict with them with that. They ain't talking about sin because the witches are in the church. They're comfortable in the church. They're taking over. Those who are in peace and say, oh, I got a peaceful life. I'm relaxed. Ain't nothing happening to me. I live joyfully. I live. If you are being attacked every day because it's a spiritual warfare, if you are being attacked, be joyful with that attack because that means you are doing the right thing in God's eyes because the devil is attacking you because you're doing the right thing. If you are living in peace and you ain't being attacked at all by the devil or no temptation, <laughs> you got to ask yourself. What am, what am I doing wrong? Like you still sleeping with the enemy. <laughs> Means you got one foot in and you still got one foot out. You still doing something of this world, some pattern, which <laughs> you can't conform to the patterns of this world, but you're still doing something and you're still seeking him. Listen, God don't listen to a sinner's prayer. Those who sin hard and heavily, he don't listen to them. But when you come to him and repent, for your sins and mean it he's gonna he's gonna listen to you he's gonna forgive you and he's gonna bless you with that Holy Spirit you know but I could tell you that I've I, I've been in the train and I've been I had two people in front of me and I looked straight ahead their whole face turned to demons I had people like demons bro demons I had this one chick come to me she came in beautiful on the outside which is what you see out here. All these girls looking all good out here to, 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 to get you, to get you to lust. But they're all looking good out here. But then the inside, spiritually, they are wicked. They look evil. They look demonic, horrible inside. 
spiritually inside is evil. So I had one girl, she came into the train. She was she was thick. She was she was she was pretty. She didn't need to do the extra stuff that she did to herself. But at one point if I was lusting, I would have been drooling at her and watching her. Staring at her. I I ain't I don't pay no mind to these women now. The modern women, nah. I, I don't even think about sex at all. You know what I'm saying? I don't think about that. Though I get tempted and I have my battles because the devil attacks to try to get you back into your sin. He tries to attack your mind and I'm always rebuking and fighting. But I'm not going to react to it. I'm not going to feed into my flesh and I'm not going to do it. I ain't going to open no doors. So this girl came into the train and she sat down staring right at me. I ain't looking at her, but like I said, the third eye, the penal gland, that y'all call it, but I call it what well, God calls it, the seal of God. It was open. I'm looking straight ahead. I see her. I'm looking at her, but I ain't looking at her. Her whole face changed. It got bigger. Her hair got different. Her eyes well, it kept shrinking. It got bigger, white. Her face was demonic, making faces at me. Certain people, when you sit down, I would sit down and I had people across from me. They would not look the same. They would look, their skin would be different, their face would be different, and they'll be making faces at me. And I'll be rebuking in my mind and all that. And they feel that. They get mad. They get mad. All I'm saying is, God is real. Jesus is real. Jesus is, he's, he, he's my Lord and Savior. He's your Lord and Savior. And he's, you can be saved from your sins. Repent. Repent. Because he's coming. And we don't even know when he's coming because the angels don't even know when he's coming, which is why you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared. Okay? You have to be prepared, which is why you got to fast. Fast and keep yourself in prayer. God loves when you fast and when you mean it, when you're doing it for him, when you abstaining and not eating, especially those who overeating and overeating, that's a sin. That's, that's gluttony. There's so many sins for different reasons, man. Get free from that. And every everybody's doing what they're doing to think it looks cool, but I know deep down inside they're hurting, man. It ain't cool to do that, to do none of that. It ain't cool. I know at the end of the day, they're alone. they all putting a facade out here. Everybody's walking out here like a facade, faking for the world to look cool and all that. Who you trying to look cool for, man? Look cool for God. Worship, worship your Lord and Savior, your Creator. Go to Him. Praise Him. Worship Him. Show your love to him. Give your prayers to him. And walk the right way. Walk in the truth. Alright? Because the devil got everybody fooled. Alright? Don't get fooled by his governments and all that. Because they part of that too. Look at the look at the Pope now and them. They're trying to change the Ten Commandments. You can't do that. You can't do that. Aren't you paying attention to what's happening in this world? Or are you still... Asleep to the distractions of the music and the and the party and all that that the devil's keeping you blinded. There's a lot of changes happening in this world. There's a lot of things that the government is doing to people. There's a lot of people who need to be free from their sins, and they gotta get those demons delivered. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. All right. Repent and go to Jesus Christ. You know, and ever since I started seeking him and walking in truth and walking out here with this bright light in me with the Holy Spirit, you get hated on. And even if you try to talk to people when, you know, about the gospel, the word, or not even that, even when you say, when they say, have a good day, when you tell somebody, have a blessed day, when you use the word bless, have a blessed day, they don't even respond to that. They look at you like, ugh, like it's a disgust, that word. They, they hate you. They despise you. But that's not them. That's the demon in them. That's the spirit in them that they don't even know. Remember, the world hated Jesus. And if they hate you, for remember that they hated him first. Keep doing what you're doing to serve the Most High. Keep going to your purpose. Keep following that. Keep following your call. Keep spreading the word. Unplug from this matrix, this demonic, satanic matrix. Unplug from it. And if you think, if you don't believe what I'm saying, try this. Whatever sin you are addicted to, give it up for, for, two, for a week or two weeks. 
Matter of fact, stop doing everything that you're doing that you think is negative that's giving you these things because everything is negative that's a sin. But everything that you that, that, that doesn't make you feel good, two weeks. Keep yourself clean. Two weeks. Don't 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 do nothing. Just get a scripture, read a Bible, or listen to holy music, or listen to positive music that has to do with the word, or things that speaking with the truth that has to do God related, or positive energy music. Stick to that. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you're gonna start seeing some changes and start seeing some weird things happening to you spiritually. Cause there's a spiritual warfare. It's real out here. There's a lot of people out here. A lot of people out here, you got to be careful who you surround yourself with, who you engage with, with in conversation with, especially now being a targeted individual in this world for walking in this truth because the devil's trying to plot on you. He's strategizing on you as we speak. He's trying to he's strategizing you. He got people watching you, what you order, whatever food you order, whatever drinks you, you get, your clothes, whatever style you do. He's having people watch you to... For them to return information back to Satan, to their handlers. These agents is watching you. So he can get you. Satan is throwing all these women my way that he knew that I would lust for. And they coming to me. They eyeing me. They looking at me. They twirling their hair. Even these women that I be seeing with their boyfriends, they eyeing me. And then the guy is looking at me and looking at her. And I look at him like, I've been there. I understand how you feel. But get right with God. Get spiritually awakening because your your girlfriend or whoever you're dealing with got a succubus, a Jezebel in her. She's demonly possessed, but she's fascinated by the light that's in me. And you are not walking in the truth and you're still spiritually dead. You don't know what's going on. Get right with God and you'll understand and start seeing how this world really is. But when you see the modern woman for who they are, you look at them and you go, man, don't even waste your time. I'm, I'm, I, I pray to God. I pray for, for him to give me the things that I need and I wait patiently for for his calling. Everything happens for a reason when it's from God. So now my ex was the last I was with. No more, man. You know, I just pray. I pray for the people. I, I pray for everybody. And I'm just, I'm moving differently. Different, I'm maturing, spiritually awakening. My spiritual vibration is like this. I'm learning about cults, evilness. There's a lot of evil in this world, man. And you don't even know who's who. Some people who you could be your best friend, your day, your day ones, they plotting on you. They hating on you. They envying you because they got that spirit in them. Spirit of Cain is in them. There's a lot of people, they got that Judas spirit in them because Judas betrayed Jesus. They got that Judas spirit in them too. There's, there's spirits out here, man. It's a spiritual warfare. Get your eyes open. Wake up to the truth, yo. Wake up. Because some of these people you hanging around, you don't even know what they were born into. Some people were born into witchcraft, into cults, into Satanism. And another thing with the Christian people, you know, people who they say they're religious. Don't get fooled by somebody who's speaking in tongues. I right? Test that spirit because guess what? Satanists, they speak in tongues too with their demons, with the devil. They, they talk in tongues just like Christians do. The devil's a copycat. The devil's a copycat. He copycats what the what, what, what the scripture says, but he, he twists it. That's what he does. He's the father of all lies. He got these people fooled. He's leading them to the lake of fire. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the way, the Bible. Go to that Bible. Get a relationship with God in your heart so that way you can awaken to the truth. And I'm happy. And I'm, all, I'm blessed. And I thank God every day for him changing my life. I thank, God for him. I thank God for him changing my life, for opening my eyes, for letting me see the world for what it is. Because I was spiritually dead out here. I, was, I, was, I had so many doors opening. You know, I, I, I thank God for him for letting me get a relationship with my father again, for forgiving him. You know what I'm saying? Like opening, changing my life around. And it felt good. You could forgive. You know, forgive and keep keep walking with God. And I pray for those brothers and sisters walking in truth and those 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 targeted individuals that are being gang stalked by Satan's agents, which is coming from even people that you know. Because like I said, the spirit of discernment lets you know who's doing what. They all do it the same. They 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 <coughs> they rub their head. Remember that they they do this. They looking at their handlers. Watch out for those signs. They wear the red and the blue. 
They got the cars coming everywhere. Oh, don't 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 forget about um street theater. They do street theater too. They do smear campaigns. They do street theaters. They create events to get to see your reaction. I've been going through certain places that it was always isolated. Always. But now that I got the light walking in the truth, all these places that I'm going to now is surrounded with people. People are already automatically there. Automatically. They already got people planted there. Stationed there. Watching. Posted. Just keep a lookout on you. Taking pictures of you on their phone. Recording you. Letting the next person know about your information or whatever you give them. That's why you got to be careful who you talk to. What information you share. Right? And another thing is that every... All these... Everywhere I turn, there's a woman coming out of her car. Exactly at the moment. She, it's, it's, it's perfect timing because it's spiritual. Revealing her clothes, looking at me, smiling, twirling her hair, doing things so I could get her, so she could she could catch her, catch my attention, so I could look at her and lust over her and give my energy to her. But it ain't working. I ain't playing those games. I ain't playing none of those games. Semen retention is real. Don't let no don't let nobody tell you, oh, it hasn't worked, it hasn't worked. They lying to you so that way you don't get into the truth because they don't want no masculine men anymore. They're trying to kill that. They try to kill that. They're afraid of the masculine men. And they're afraid of men getting into their truth and knowing exactly who they are. They're afraid of that. And they're afraid of a righteous person with a righteous voice. They're afraid of that. Like I said, I don't believe in mental illness. I don't believe in those pills. I don't believe in none of that. God is a healer. Seek with him. Whatever pains you are going through, pray to him. He got you. And don't worry, though. Get the spirit of fear out, anxiety, get all these spirits out of you, right? Because remember, no weapon shall form against you. No weapon. Once you got the most high with you, no weapon you form, you shall form against you. Nothing. 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 And even if they're doing these magic, casting spells, curses, trying to poison you, trying to kill you, they're trying to do things to you, trying to, trying to have sex with you in their dreams. Yeah, because lately since I've been a, uh, awakening... I've been having certain dreams, certain dreams, but I, I, I'm, I'm starting to able, being able to control it. At one point, I didn't know what was going on in my dreams. There's still one dream I'm trying to figure out because there's, there's certain ways that you get into the dreams. And this dream was I was walking into this store, but I also had discernment. And I went down the stairs from these people with these people. And it looked like that they were going to try to sacrifice me because I guess the discernment showed me something that I didn't go all the way down the stairs. But at the end of that stairs, I saw those people lined up. But then there was like a, such a, it was a roar, like a demonic roar. It was evil. And it was something that wasn't human. And I didn't even give it a chance to look at it. I just ran out the room and I woke up. And I was like, what does that dream mean? And I think that dream was... Because I've been going through so much gang stalking and being so quiet and just dealing with it and dealing with it, holding it in. That guy was just telling me like, yo, I think that dream was face the evil, conquer it. Because I got you. I'm going to speak for you. I'm, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm going to tell the truth. Let the, let, let the world know about the gospel. Let the world know about that God is true. Let the world know about what the devil's trying to do. Expose wickedness. Expose the evil. Expose it. Because we're in the last days. And you need to get right with God. Because he's coming. And you do not want to be left behind. And I'm going to tell you something. That back, you know, that's not the mark. We get into that. But that wasn't that. Apparently, their they thing failed. So they got to come up with another way out of depopulate the population. Well, it's all about population control for this satanic matrix system but I want to congratulate the brothers in truth and the sisters in truth and I want to congratulate those that are actually spitting that truth spitting the gospel you know what I'm saying and uh, letting people know the truth man it's a beautiful thing to see brothers and sisters walking in truth you know exposing the evil and letting people know about sin which is a lot of churches ain't talking about no more they ain't talking about sin they ain't being hard in their church they ain't being hard in the Christians nah on no religion, nah. You gotta let them know. If you sinning and you living in sin and you living in that way, 
you opening doors to demons. You got demon, you demonly possessed because it becomes a stronghold from a stronghold to a bondage. And if you don't get free from that, you ain't going to get saved. You're going to go straight to hell. You got to be straight up with them. You're going straight to hell. And we spit in this message and we letting you know all the truth about what's happening in this world based off our testimonies and what we see from how our life changed to save you and let you know that God and Jesus is the way. Yahweh and Yeshua. Go to them. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. God so loved the world that he gave his only son up. He sacrificed his son. He sacrificed his son to die on the cross to save us from our sins, yo. If that ain't love, I don't know what I don't know what love is. If that ain't love, I don't know. Go look up John 3.16. The world knows that. The world knows John 3.16. If that ain't love, I don't know what that is. But I'll tell you one thing. Don't let him get into your mind. Don't let the devil get into your mind. There's a lot of witchcraft out here. A lot of spells, a lot of magic, a lot of things. And they're doing fluid too. They, i seen this one guy on the train. I'm sitting down. He's in front of me. What is he doing? My man's whole face looked reptilian. Draconian. Reptilian. Right? He walking left and right. Touching things. He's already putting curses and spells. Fluid. He's already tagging spots. And he's looking right at me. I'm looking at him too. And then when I looked at him, his face looked normal. Then when I looked away, slightly away, when my, the God shield, your little third eye y'all talk about, my man's whole face looked reptilian. It wasn't him. And his eyes got big. His eyes looked like that in the movie Beetlejuice when the guy got his head shrunk at the end. When they did voodoo. You know how his eyes got big, big like that, but his face looked like a like 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 a reptilian. It, it stretched out. Spiritual warfare, yo, the spirit world is real. The spirit world is real, and I feel like everything happened in my life for a reason. I had to learn, and 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 God loves the 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 broken heart. He's more closer to the broken hearts. So those of you who's going through your trauma right now, who you feel alone and you feel like nobody's with you or nobody's listening to you and you in your room and you crying and you feel all alone, I'm going to tell you right now, no matter how your world is right now, even if you sin it, God is right there watching you and he's looking at you and he's still showing his love to you, but you got to repent for your sins, but he's watching you and he's there with you the most because he's close to the heartbroken. Oh, and he loves the widow and they, he loves the widows. So those of you who feel alone, who feel like you got no hope, there's hope in Christ. And he's there with you. He's watching you. He's watching you. Stay prayed up. Keep him in prayer. Trust him. Repent from your sins. Turn from your wicked ways. Change your life around. Take it from me. A person who did it all. Drinking, partying, smoking, was vibing with people, getting into arguments, getting into breakups. You know, I wasn't happy with how I once once was because that wasn't me. Those were doors opening. Those were demons that were in that was in me. They were controlling me. But I'm free. I'm free with the grace of God. I'm free. And you can be, too. You can be, too. Trust in him. Stay prayed up. Blessings to all of you. One love, I'm out.